the Maya Anush. So we celebrated the 64th Independence Day, as we all know that. My question is, what's the reason behind that our India, our Indian population, 89% of the population is below poverty line? I think it's an excellent question. The reality is, Ashutosh, right? The reality is, you know, we keep talking about caste and creed, Dalit and Brahman. I think as a country, we have failed ourselves in only one area. We have not ever provided equal opportunities. I mean, this is a country which has entrepreneurship zeal. It's a country where people do things in the wake of the impossible. But as a nation, we didn't provide equal opportunities and we continue not to provide equal opportunities to our people. Everyone talks about Maoism. Let me take you back into history. In 1967, the first United Democratic Front government took birth in West Bengal. And in 1968, Oshim Chatterjee, began the Naxalite movement, not from some farmland, but from the playing fields of Presidency College. Why? Because there was migration of young men folk from villages to metropolises only because there was a lack of opportunity. Today when we talk about Maoism, we fail to contextualize the history of what happened. And today what we are doing, whether it's with tribals, whether it's with other pockets, we are actually separating the tiller from the soil. We are separating people from their natural habitat. We are separating people from, their, from a habitat of comfort. And, and I completely agree with what has, been, what has been said of late. In India, neither do we know how to harness our natural resources, nor do we know how to preserve our natural assets. And in this absence of wisdom in this area, opportunities continue to be denied to people at the bottom of the pyramid. And that's why the bottom of the pyramid is important. It's important for us to build skyscrapers and fantastic office blocks and lovely bungalows. But it's equally important for us to see that people don't go homeless. Because one day they will knock at your door, as they must. Because it is on their share of natural resources and assets that you've built the edifice of your wealth as well. And I think that sensitivity needs to be uh, uh, taken cognizance of in any evolving uh, you know, society, more so a society like ours, which for years has deprived people earlier on the basis of caste and creed. Today we've created economic Dalits We've created, we've created economic backwards. That's, that's not fair. You cannot have a country where you deprive people of basic drinking water, or of sanitation, of connectivity. I mean, it is grossly unfair then to talk about a 9% GDP growth, when actually you're a country in decline, where 80% of your population lives on less than a dollar a day. I mean, this paradox can't live forever. And if we don't take the steps that we should, and here I'm including corporate India, there's going to be trouble. Which is why I'm delighted, and I'm not saying this because, you know, I work with uh, uh, Ratan Dada, with Mr. Krishna Kumar, or any of these guys. What excites me is about their spirit of philanthropy. What excites me is about the give back. And I'm sure there are many like that. It's not that they are unique. But they've set a kind of value architecture for themselves, which makes it extremely rewarding for their conscience. And ultimately, there is a God who blesses the good you do. But there's also a God who punishes you in myriad ways. And you know, we all live one lifetime. I don't know what I'm going to become the next life, you know, in, in my next lifetime, if I'm going to become anything at all. So the reality is, why don't we actually live this lifetime with purpose, with passion, and most importantly, with compassion. I think that, to my mind, is the is the arresting dilemma.